Well, well, well. It's about pucking time. NZXT has made a 360 millimeter cooler to join their Kraken family. A lot of people have been asking for this because other companies, Corsair, even Fractal out of nowhere kind of, have been adding 360 millimeter coolers to their lineup. It's a popular size, it's definitely getting popular right now, and it complements 280 well for people who can't fit the width of a 140 millimeter fan. So today we're reviewing the Kraken X72 liquid cooler from NZXT using the same base product as the X62 and 52, just with extra length. It's 360 millimeters, so it's got 320 millimeter fans on it. That's what we're looking at today. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake's View 37 case. The View 37 focuses on highlighting custom PC builds with its full panoramic window and tinted front acrylic. In our thermal testing, the View 37 performed reasonably well when considering its looks-focused build, which is partly thanks to the airflow design and the removal of a bottom power supply shroud. For a balance of looks and performance, check the link in the description below for the View 37. These coolers are pretty straightforward. We previously tore down one of the Kraken series coolers. I think it was an X42, but it's all the same parts. So the pump internally, it's an Asetek pump, it's a Gen 5 pump, and NZXC had a really heavy hand in designing, actually they custom made a PCB that ended up going in there for RGB LED controller. That's something that NZXT did before the sixth generation, which is now being used for the Corsair H100i Pro series. So H150i Pro, H115i Pro. Those have a new RGB LED PCB in it that Ace Attack's made, and they're offering to all of their partners who buy sixth generation pumps. As a product itself, the sixth generation pump is not better in any way than the fifth generation pump. The difference is almost literally just the LEDs. There are some changes in hotspots and some changes in how the liquid is pumped around. The, the actual pump, the impeller, is definitely better in 6th gen. But as far as cooling performance, they're roughly the same, and 6th gen is even slightly behind in all tests that we've done, and according to all of the thermal engineers we've spoken with. So in terms of performance, 5th and 6th gen, not so far apart. That means that the X72 here, which is a $200 cooler that competes with the H150i Pro from Corsair, a $170 cooler, both 360 millimeters, that means that in terms of the pump quality alone, there's not a big difference between them. The primary changes are things like Corsair has specified a slightly smaller cold plate on their Pro series, and they've also got uh, the 6th generation changes, which mostly boil down to LEDs, and a better impeller. So ultimately, what we're looking at with these products, like always with something made by a supplier like Ace Attack, is the fans. It's who has better fans, who has better noise normalized performance. We tested all of that. And prices here, just to give you an idea, the X72, 200 bucks, three 120 millimeter fans, so it's 360 radiator, $200 for that. X62 is significantly cheaper, $160. EVGA CLC 280, another 280 cooler, is between 120 and 150 depending on the day. The H150i Pro 170, Flow 360, 184. So the X72 is definitely at the high end. It is still cheaper than something like an EK MLC Phoenix, which is a semi-modular, semi-open loop design. So kind of riding the line between entering into beginner open or semi-open loop territory, which is a dangerous place to be. But if it works well, and you're definitely not gonna expand your loop, that's not a bad product for you. So let's get into this. The main test we're doing, 100% fan speed and 100% pump speed. So basically it's just the flat out test. Everything maxed out, how well does it perform with no constraints whatsoever. Test after that, 100% fan silent pump, which is a preset and cam, and then 63% fan speed to get a 40 dBA noise normalized test for all the testing methodology and information, the bench we use, all of that. Click the link in the description below. It'll go to the article. You can read more about it there. Tested at flat out speeds, the Kraken X72 cooler maintains a steady state load temperature of 35 degrees Celsius over ambient or thereabouts, roughly equivalent to the Corsair H150i Pro at max speeds of 1600 RPM, measuring at 35.8 degrees over ambient. The difference is within margin of error. The EK Phoenix 360 is an expandable loop with more open loop tendencies than closed loop tendencies and benefits from additional headroom at higher RPMs of 2150. The EK Phoenix does about 33.6 degrees at peak performance using fans with 150 RPM higher speed 
and an overall bigger cooler and block. Compared more fairly versus other 360mm coolers, the Kraken X72 is right around the H150i Pro and the Fractal S36 at 1900 RPM, which is about 100 RPM slower than the X72's fans. Running with the X72 at 100% fan speeds and a silent pump setting, we land at 36.4 degrees over ambience, and this marks it as roughly tied with the H150i Pro at 40 dBA and H100i V2 at max fan RPMs, a significantly louder cooler but one which performs equivalently when slowing the X72 pump. Noise normalized testing is done to equal the playing field of the coolers, setting all of them to the same total system noise level of 40 dBA. This allows us to test overall efficiency and efficacy of cooler and fan design. For noise normalized cooling performance at 40 dBA total system noise, the Kraken X72 at 63% fan speeds measured at 37.1 degrees Celsius over ambient. This plants us right between the H150i Pro 360 cooler and the Fractal S36 360 cooler. These three numbers are all within margin of error of one another. There is no significant difference between the coolers within one degree of each other, and the X62 is also functionally equivalent when noise normalized. Keep in mind that pump speeds are somewhat variable with a 10% variance plus or minus, contributing to some unit to unit differences, and also the fan size of these coolers is different depending on if you're looking at 280 or 360. NTXT's X72 performance is about in line with other high-end coolers. It's outdone at noise normalized performance by the EK MLC Phoenix 360, but that's a very expensive cooling solution with semi-open loop possibilities. For noise levels, the stock Kraken X72 with full fan and pump speeds measures at 50 dBA, the same as the X52, a 240 cooler with max fan speeds, and also not far from the S36. 63% fan speeds hits 40 dBA for this one, and the silent pump setting doesn't do much to reduce noise, but that's because we had no issues with this pump making noise to begin with. Some Ace Attack pumps can be whiny, but this particular unit performed well and did not have any meaningful pump whine. The cooler does perfectly fine in terms of all the thermal and noise testing. Thermally, it's competitive. It's not significantly better or significantly disadvantaged than any of the things we tested, including the EK Phoenix MLC, which is a different class of cooler. It's a higher class of cooler, to be frank, but it's more expensive, it's expandable, and it carries the whole EK theme of being sort of open loop-ish uh, before you get into that really high-end open loop stuff. So that's not a fair comparison, but even when you do compare it to that product, they're not terribly different in terms of flat-out performance for cooling one device, the CPU. That means, ultimately, you're left with trying to figure out why you would buy one cooler over the other. So if they're all the same price, and you're talking about Kraken X62, H150i Pro, H115i Pro, H115, Kraken X72, EVGA 280, all that stuff. If you're talking those coolers, it more or less comes down to pick the one with the noise levels that you want and the one with the look that you want. Pretty straightforward. And ZXT focuses pretty hard on the look. They definitely have the most advanced RGB LED options in terms of current coolers. They're miles ahead of Corsair still, who are playing catch up with the sixth generation pump. And if that's your thing, then NZXT is the way to go. But uh, you still have to ask yourself if you need a 360 versus a, a 280, because functionally, in terms of performance, they're basically the same. Pick the one that's cheaper. That'd be the X62 in this case, which is 160 bucks, or, if you don't care about the LEDs, go even lower down the list, grab something like an EVGA CLC 280 or the old Corsair H115i non-pro for much cheaper than any of these. That's if you're looking at just the performance angle though. They're close enough to be completely irrelevant and you could save a bunch of money by going that way. But again, if you can't fit a 280 or you really want a 360 for one reason or another, it makes your build look better, whatever, the X72 is perfectly fine as a product. There's nothing significantly wrong with it, nothing really wrong with it at all, it's just that pricing wise, it's, it's up there. It's higher than the Flow 360, it's higher than the H150i Pro that it competes with, and it's higher than the Fractal S36, and basically everything else. It's lower than the Phoenix, I guess. But that's uh, not a big victory. So it comes down to, do you want the Kraken X72 specifically, and it's RGB LEDs? But performance-wise, you have absolutely nothing to worry about. You can pick any of these coolers that we just talked about. 7262, 150i, 115, Flow 360, CLC 280. Any of them would be perfectly fine 
in terms of performance. You pick based on the price and the looks. We'll leave that to you. But as a product, nothing wrong with it at all, really. It's just, as I said, price. So look into that, see what you want to buy, let us know. Otherwise, go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our new GN crystals like this one, the Mod Mat, or go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Subscribe for more, and I will see you all next time.